Yes, life is good, especially because you're here. <laughs> yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, fall is beginning to fall, so it is beautiful. The home of Alvin York, Dolly Parton, Jeff Quinn, many other people. Yeah, uh, including you if you come to visit, right? Yeah, a lot of people come to Nashville and a lot of people leave, a lot of people stay places area is growing like crazy glad to have you here for another Sunday shoot around because uh, you might look at your calendar and uh, it is Sunday right your weekly update with yours truly is it recorded on a Sunday well who knows could be a Saturday afternoon you never know some people might figure that out since it's posted about before daylight on Sunday, you never know. There are some pretty smart people out there, right? Though I never claim to be shooting on Sunday. It's your Sunday morning shoot around video. You get every Sunday. And the main thing is up to date, okay? Uh, a video we post on the Browning High Power. <sighs> it's always timely. Doesn't matter when it was recorded, right? The Browning High Power has been around since 1930. Five. So, if we recorded that video in 1936, or 1986, or 2006, or 2000, or 2020, eh, probably the same information about that firearm for the most part, right? It's just that resolution camera technology was not very good in 1936, you know, in terms of putting it on YouTube. <laughs> Although, if you've seen some of the footage, you know, uh, World War II footage and different things uh, that uh, have come out and they've been worked on, and not bad, is it? Not bad. Glad you're here, and uh, I'll try not to go quite as long as I did last week. Part of the problem is I, I hit on too many different topics. I shouldn't do that. I should, like, limit just one or two topics and, and my guns, all right? And that's what I do. I come out and shoot a few firearms that I'm just in the mood to shoot for the most part. And you might have seen the video on this Blackhawk. Just posted it, uh, you know, a couple days ago. And I wasn't finished with it. I didn't totally. I, I I knew I wanted to shoot again, so I didn't clean it extra good, quote unquote. And I thought, you know what, I want to shoot that some more, uh, or shoot it again. And uh, you know, in these days uh, of ammo shortages, even if your ammo is supplied. Uh, still don't want to abuse that and uh, you know it's still not easy to get all you want and uh, or need even maybe I don't know it just depends on the caliber but uh, so anyway I want to shoot it again and I like to do that I like to take a gun that I haven't shot for a while and you might be the same way go out and shoot if you maybe it's a rifle you shoot it five ten times and uh, you can get it out a few days later, shoot again, and just kind of re-familiarize yourself with it. Uh, have have a week or two where you just enjoy that rifle again, or that handgun. Doesn't take, as I've said before, shooting 200 rounds or 1,000 rounds with a firearm. If you already are familiar with the firearm, you've shot it a fair amount, you know where it hits, scope is on, the sights are on. Uh, part of it is just verifying sights are still on you remember the trigger feel and how it shoots you're just enjoying it again now some of you would disagree i'm sure probably the younger you are maybe i don't know 
that, oh man, I can't get my gun out unless I shoot 100 rounds or 50 rounds or 500 rounds or, or whatever. I, but, you know, I, I mean, that's fun too sometimes, but I enjoy just, just a few shots and, and taking it apart, making sure it's mechanically sound still and cleaning it, and just, just taking care of it. Part of it may be because I have, uh, dare I say, uh, several firearms. The ones I haven't lost in the lake, but so I, I don't feel like I need to go out and just blast through 500 rounds with any one of them very often. Just uh, I'd rather enjoy and savor the history, the, each one of them occasionally, and just shoot a few times and, and clean it, uh, disassemble it, and just remind myself what a cool firearm it is, you know. So. Anyway, that, that's my rationalization for this period of ammo shortage, right? So, pretty cool. If you haven't seen the video um, on this, what is your problem? What, what did Ermi say? What is your major malfunction? Okay, <laughs> if you've not seen the video that just went up, yeah, okay. So, uh, keep up, please, with the lessons, the videos <laughs> that are posted. And uh, yeah, this this is pretty cool. It's the Ruger Blackhawk old model, you know, 45. I think it's the title of the video, and it's a three-screw model that I talk about in the video. So I ain't going to tell you much about it. You already should know. You should have seen it. In fact, escape out of this video, pretend it's not Sunday morning yet, and pretend it's when was it? Uh, Thursday morning, maybe. I don't know. Did I posted that video? Okay, watch it then come back and you'll know what I'm talking about okay because this is the first centerfire firearm I ever owned in my life on earth okay my human life All right so uh, check the video pretty cool pretty cool really a sound uh, handgun and uh, I like it I like it yeah hey, appreciate bottle stall can I spray some on the lens <laughs> yeah big help and talon grips I think I have one in my pocket a talon grip yeah, <laughs> always do, almost always. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I appreciate all those people that help us. And guess what, speaking of ammo shortages, I was prowling around and looking uh, for various ammo. Uh, what was I looking for? Because I have uh, some ammo, of course. Uh, <laughs> I have some ammo, understatement, right? And I sometimes lose track of it. I've got ammo cans where I've canned up some ammo, like random uh, 556 boxes or something. I don't want to dump it all out because it may be five or six different types of ammo, brands and everything else, you know, from, from the old days and uh, stuff I still might shoot because I, I don't shoot Federal all the time. Mostly I do. Mostly I still buy Federal when I buy ammo. And uh, I've got yeah, I don't know, a couple of cases of um, the federal ammo, 556 even, that you know they didn't even supply. I just bought it. You know, when you go in line to buy ammo, uh, you know, and they, I've had that for I don't know, two, three years at least or more. Uh, you know, just might be the ammo that that you want to buy is the same ammo company that sponsors you. I mean, duh, you know, for your own personal uses. And so if we're testing a rifle or a firearm, I'll use, uh, you know, federal ammo. Depends, you know, it depends. We don't do the thousand round test. If I was going to do a thousand round test on a firearm or something, I'd probably, you know, let federal, hey, look, I want, we're going to need extra, extra this ammo. And we're, we've got this fire we want to do this test on just to let you know. And okay. But we don't do much of that. And uh, so, that's it. Most of the testing I do is kind of like this. Maybe just you know, plink a little bit with the firearm, you know, and then do uh, do a video, make sure it works and everything. So anyway, but anyway, I have my own reservoir of ammo, and then have the federal uh, supplied ammo, and that kind of thing. Don't ever want to abuse that that generosity. But as, speaking of that, long way around the barn, as I was looking around for something, I ran across a 50 caliber ammo can. You know what that is? You know, it's one of those kind of the fat ones for 50 caliber rounds ammo. And a lot of us use that size. It's a really nice size uh, for ammo. And, and if you get a full of ammo, it's it's enough weight, isn't it? <laughs> it's enough. You fill one of those with nine millimeter, or 45, or anything, 10 millimeter, 
and it's a chunk to pick up, you know, so you, you really don't want a, a, a can too big, like full of ammo, or you're going to need a, a, a dolly or a, a forklift to move it. Well, I ran across a, a 50 caliber ammo can, you know, hmm, it's a 10 millimeter on top of it. It was under some stuff, and I just not exactly opened it up, and uh, oh, it was probably a couple of thousand of my 10 millimeter hand loads I forgot I had. And I know you must be a gun nut if you forget about 2,000 rounds of 10 millimeter ammo you have, right? Well, yeah, I, I guess I am a gun nut, yeah. And I've done so much loading over the years, and when I was reloading a lot, one of the things I would do, many of you can relate to this, is maybe there were certain calibers I just seemed like I was always working on, like nine millimeter, maybe or 45 ACP, different things. But uh, others I didn't, you know, switch out the dies and different things. And I would wait until I had all my brass was empty, you know, and or I was going to buy some more brass maybe. And I got the bullets in and everything I needed, and and just you know, change out the dies. It was not a big deal on a Dillon press, of course. But I only used to get into a mode. I'm just okay. I got all this brass and this and the bullets, everything I need. I'm, I'm gonna catch up on all my 10 millimeter hand loading, and I would just load a bunch, just totally, and then go back to a 45 or whatever on that press, you know. And so consequently, I would have, uh, I would load a lot at one time. Yeah, you know, intentionally. I did that with 44 Special. I still have a bunch of 44 Special hand loads, a lot that I loaded, and it's got to be 10 years ago. I did the same thing. I had all my brass together, hadn't loaded any for a long time, and just might have even bought some brass, I don't know, but I just loaded up a bunch of it. You know, probably a thousand rounds or, or more. That's a lot for a revolver in a cartridge. Well, for some people, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and so I'm still working on that load when I'm not shooting federal, that that batch. But uh, anyway, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. Need I tell you? In in today's uh, ammo shortage, uh, and I felt a little bit guilty. Oh, I should share this with somebody, but then again, it's hand loads. You know, I can't do that. But uh, yeah, I did find some, and I was going to maybe shoot a few of them. That's one reason I, I brought that in addition to my uh, the. Uh, Blackhawk, I brought out the Gen 4 10 millimeter Glock 20. I might take a couple shots with it and make sure those hand work loads work, still work. Okay, so that's kind of what I brought out today to, to mess with. I'll show you that to you closer, more closely. Yeah, beautiful gun. Actually, it's a beautiful, ugly firearm, isn't it? The old 10 millimeter Glock 20, the, 10, the Glock 20. Uh, I, you know, this thing has become so popular in so many ways. Not just this one, the 10 millimeter has really had a comeback, it seems to me. And it might be slowed down by the ammo shortage, but it's really made a comeback. And boy, you, you, uh, you go to Alaska, as I've talked about, you see the guys up there making videos you know, on various guns, like was it Choop, Choops Outdoors and different people, a lot of them still, you know, they rely on the old 10 millimeter and they're getting into, was it 45 Super and some others, but the 10 millimeter is very, very, very popular. And as I pointed out to somebody in a comment, said something about, you really need a rifle. He said something about, you really need a rifle or shotgun if you're gonna stop a bear and that mess. Right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but not many people go bear hunting with a handgun, especially a, Glock 10 millimeter, uh, you know, you if you know you're going hunting, that's what, and you know, bear hunting, again, I don't know much about hunting. Uh, I know there are seasons for black bear. I don't know about brown bear and how many of those are hunting. And for those who don't know, hunting is what keeps the population at a level where they don't starve to death and that sort of thing, like whether it's deer or various animals. I know a lot of people think it's horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, but, you know, starving is horrible, horrible, horrible. You should have thought about that before you were so happy to see that new mall in that gigantic uh, housing development go in in your neighborhood and all those wooded areas uh, uh, dug out of there, you know, okay? So we're all responsible for the reduced uh, number of trees. But, uh, but anyway, such as it is, uh, it's, it's animal population control is a lot of what uh, that is, you know, so and uh, whether you agree with it you know, or not, that's, that's what it is. 
And, but anyway, back to that. So I don't know about bear hunting, how many places. I know in Tennessee, you can, I think there's seasons to hunt black bear and they limit the numbers of course and all that. But you would not go out hunting a, a black bear or a uh, brown bear you know, with a Glock probably, right? It's a defensive thing. Just like uh, the gun you're carrying on your waist or in your pocket right now, if you knew trouble was coming, or you're going to war tomorrow, you would want something bigger, maybe more powerful, you know, more ammo or whatever it might be, okay? Uh, it's strictly to have in case, okay? It's the best thing that you can carry, uh, the most convenient thing you can fairly easily carry and that might save your life, okay? That's what it amounts to. Are you gonna, if you have a shot, are you gonna carry a shotgun or a rifle everywhere you go while you're fishing? or whatever you're hiking, you know, big old shotgun or a rifle, right? Some people would <laughs> if they're in certain areas, I'm sure. But by and large, uh, you want something just in case that that might save your life, what it comes down to, okay? Uh, can I shoot? I'm gonna shoot the Glock. Let's see if it works. That's not my, okay, I got my magazine with it, my carry ammo, big hollow points, right? Okay, let's take, uh, see if this thing works. I haven't shot it for a while. All right, let's put one on that. Woo! Bullseye! <laughs> Get those ears in. Woo! Speaking of hunting, there's a hog. <laughs> and speaking of hunting, there's a gong over there. Oh, can't stop on the miss. There we go. Cowboy! <laughs> Hit the cowboy with the last hit round. Yep, still nice gun. Uh, Glock 20, if you really want power in a reliable handgun, it, it is hard to beat. I, I think in some ways you can... There's so many great handguns now, polymer pistols. Uh, they're just as good, you know, as a Glock 19 and all the other pocket Glocks and everything else really get right down to it. Uh, Glock 20 is still a really excellent choice. If I'm looking for, you know, something like that, that's uh, what a lot of people still come to back, come back to that. Although the, uh, let's see, at Springfield has a, what, XDM has a nice one, as well as everybody. Everybody has a 10 millimeter now. But uh, anyway, that's pretty neat. Uh, it's always fun to bring out and shoot. And it was especially nice to find, I, I guess it's a couple thousand rounds of ammo. I, I think it probably at least, again, 50 caliber ammo can, you tell me, uh, packed right up to the roof, to the lid uh, with 10 millimeter rounds. Okay? And it, which is, this is just nothing that I grabbed out of it. And uh, that's, you know, that's a, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred rounds, you know, so uh, this is a nice find. I know it's something you might uh, dream about <laughs> if you have a 10 millimeter. I'm sorry, I, I just always been a gun nut and, and I know, yeah, we got ammo, I'm out shooting and uh, you might be hard pressed to find a nine millimeter bullet anywhere. You know, I, I hate that. Uh, that it's it's my job. I got to try to do it. You know, I'm sorry. I'm shooting for you. <laughs> I was in a. I uh, was reminded of that this week. I was in a gun shop and a pretty good sized gun shop locally. And I was just in there a while, you know, yakking with the guys and everything. So I saw several customers come and go and talking about different guns and asking for ammo. It seemed like everybody was looking for ammo and they really didn't have any. I mean, nine millimeter or five, five, six. And they have a box in the back for like each of the guns that they have that they feel like they've got to have a box of ammo to, to sell or give whatever they're doing with the gun. If you go in there and buy uh, this pistol from them, are you going to buy it? You can't find ammo anyway. And uh, yeah, I'd like to maybe buy that. What's your best price? Uh, okay, you got some ammo? Uh, no. Oh, well, maybe I don't want it then. I can't find, you know, so you really need some ammo to go with the guns. And, and so that just don't have any. They were talking about a guy came in there willing to pay big money for a box of nine millimeter. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's just a sad situation. Uh, part of it is 
people that maybe they don't know where it is if it is available and uh, they're new to firearms and they're going from gun shop to gun shop they don't know that maybe online you could maybe you could find some kind somewhere uh, but it's just it's just out it, it's a problem it, it really is and uh, if you're new to firearms especially and uh, you know one side of me really empathizes and I, I gosh I hate it I feel sorry for people that have gotten into guns recently and there's no ammo of course I on the other hand why are you so late getting into firearms you know and uh, and then also it comes back it's like money are you are you planning ahead are you you, you are you aware of the way the world works and of these cycles if you've been alive for 10 years an adult for 10 years if you've been involved in shooting at all for 10 or 15 years, have you not seen these cycles come and go every two or three years or certainly every election cycle where there's gun shortages, there's ammo shortages, and it gradually gets back to normal. And a year or two later, here it is again. Uh, you know, have you not lived through that? Have you not observed that? And you might not have if you've just been into firearms, uh, you know, for a very short period of time. So I don't want to be Mr. Meanie and come down too hard on people. But it does come down to planning, you know, it really does. Like I talked last week about dollar cost averaging your ammo, you know, buy a couple of boxes every time you get paid or depending on your income, uh, buy a little bit. Every, maybe you can afford a thousand rounds every couple of months. I don't know if you shoot that much. So uh, plan ahead, but uh, it, it is bad, it is bad, no doubt about it. Uh, in a way, it's like I'm a truck driver. There's a gasoline shortage, but I'm a truck driver. There's a diesel shortage. I'm a truck driver. Well, with what we do is we have to have ammo or we don't, we don't make videos, you know, so it's, it's what I do, you know, now for a living and uh, for fun mostly, <laughs> but also for a living. Uh, so, you know, we don't operate, we don't have ammo, so I can't feel too guilty. But then again, you know, I, I do. I, I mean, not guilty, but I, I hate it for people that can't find ammo and, and not able to shoot. Uh, like I say, I've planned ahead. Been, I've done that for decades. I'll tell you, I was in a, uh, I sound like I'm just trying to justify my own genius, right? Do I have genius? No. Uh, I, I've got a couple of boxes for example, of nine millimeter, uh, a couple of cases. I don't even remember the brand. Maybe it was Aguila. I don't know. Like I say, I buy some ammo for myself, whether and it's usually federal, maybe it's not. Uh, if it's, you know, I find some unbelievable buy or, or, or something, you know, or it's all that's available, something I really need, you know. Uh, I was in a gun shop, probably, what would it have been, February? It was when this, this craziness started, really. It was just cranking up around February, March, I don't know. Jan yeah, it had to be February or March, I guess, in a large gun shop in Nashville. And they were talking about, I really was kind of, I didn't realize that, I, I really, it caught me off guard a little bit, like a lot of you, that this is ammo demand and stuff, and because uh, I hadn't paid much attention to it. I think we'd been out to SHOT Show and busy and on the road and stuff. and, and uh, they had a pallet of of uh, nine millimeter cases there, uh, cardboard box, okay, thousand round boxes there, and it was like about only about a third of it left or something, and right there in the store. And uh, I don't want to mention they need nine while it's while while, while it's still here, you know, and uh, it's going fast. And I don't really, you know, so they were talking about yeah, they're sold out of nine and five five six was going like crazy and oh, wow well I see I've got some and I've got our, our federal uh, ammo and I say well yeah 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 it kind of caught me off guard a little bit I bought two cases right there you know and you know I just want my own personal ammo I, I want ammo for the videos and and uh, like I say I generally buy federal I mean it's just I, it's just good ammo right uh, I got some that you've never seen you'll never see the buy I just buy it you know it's not like that's why we were happy to have them as a sponsor they make good ammo I don't need to tell you that um, so anyway uh, you know I I just plan ahead on that kind of stuff as best I can and uh, I want to have ammo 
it's like managing your your money you know i'm not always being good at that either but i got better a uh, deck a few decades ago and a lot better and uh you know same old deal uh just just plan ahead on on your ammo and then when these things happen it's like right now if the world shut down electricity and everything else how long are you going to live without leaving the house because the groceries are shut down and everything else can you eat for a couple of weeks you got water for a couple of weeks you know uh, wow, how do you sleep at night if you don't? Uh, at least for a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's simple enough. My gosh, one bag of groceries, you know, some tuna fish and some odds and ends, and you can get by for a week or two, right? And a few jugs of water. But a lot of people don't plan for anything. They assume everything is gonna just crank along like it always has. This year, 2020, I think has taught us that that's not the case necessarily is it there's some weird things happening this year all right let me shoot that's why i'm here right that's why i exist to shoot this old 45 i uh i won't bend your ear too much about the history of it because i did that in the video but it is cool it's from simpson limited they lent it to, they specialize in uh, uh vintage firearms that means for my relatives in kentucky older firearms okay and uh and it's cool i was looking through their list and i saw this thing i was oh man we gotta borrow that uh and because that you know we have a deal where they'll lend us firearms for a video a vintage firearms and uh because it's exactly like the one i bought in 1972 exactly and this one was made in 1972. It's the old action. If you still haven't seen that video, am I gonna have to hit you over the head to get you back to it? Uh, this has the old action, okay? Like a Colt, half cock and everything. So let's shoot it. So if you wonder why with a Ruger, I'm half cocking it to load it, because uh, you've never seen one like that. This is an older one, pre-73. So let's shoot that target right there. Boom. And that plate. <laughs> Boom. Hits hard. <laughs> A red plate. Do I have any ammo left? Yeah, I do. I think that's it. Yeah, that was it. I knew that was it. I can count to five on a good day. All right. So... Good old Ruger, Black Hawk, uh, three screw model. And uh, as I understand it, the early ones were the flat tops up till 62. Uh, then they just call this 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 range uh, the three screw models uh, after they put the ears up over the rear sight from uh, uh, 62 to 72. It's kinda, this is uh, the period that they were like this, okay? In 73, they started the new action to where you just open up the loading gate and the cylinder spins and you can load six safely. Okay, so that's the advantage of the new ones. This one's more of a classic traditional style. Pretty neat, pretty neat. All right, what else was I going to yak at you about? Anything worthwhile? Yeah, not really. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, where's my magazine? Yeah, here it is. Uh, man, I don't know. There's, there's, there's just no logic behind what's going on these days, is there? And uh, it's got all of us perplexed. It, it really does. People who have common sense just look at all of this. People who follow it closely enough to actually know the facts of events that take place as near as anybody can uh it's it's just it's frustrating isn't it that people act the way they do based on little or no information uh twisting it to the narrative that they cherish themselves you know uh that's really what people tend to to do so many are uh, you know i mean people just believe what they want to believe they, they turn into their narr I heard a word, I think I wrote it down. Uh, somebody, oh, I heard this on the radio today, driving around. Uh, somebody was saying that on a podcast, 
you can't reason somebody out of a position they got to through emotion. Oh, that's, that's great, isn't it? You can't reason somebody out of a position they got to through emotion. I thought, uh, bingo, bingo. And that's what we find ourselves trying to do, don't we, so often regarding the Second Amendment. If you're a logical person at all, you have common sense, you, you, you just, your whole life, you, you, you go through this, don't you, with various forces, thinking that, well, let me present the facts about this and you'll see the light, you'll understand, you'll kind of see what the other side's talking about. But some people don't want to see that. You, you can't reason them out of that because they got to their narrative, their view of the world through emotion. And boy, uh, how do you deal with that, right? All right, let's, let's shoot a 10 millimeter. Well, I got them all in the red. Can you imagine that? Let's put another one in the red. Yeah, and another one, almost. <laughs> Let's go out to Mr. Gong. Am I standing in front of him? I don't know. Yeah, I had to bring it up a little bit. Every miss on the gong there today, I was holding right on the bottom of it. And probably that's where my bullets were going, right below it. Because I'd bring it up just a hair and hear that familiar sound, right? So that's the beauty of seals, what I've always liked about it. You, you, sometimes you can actually see where the bullets hit and uh, if it's dusty or something, but at least you can tell when you hit the target. And for those of you who wonder if you're new to shooting, what's this fascination with steel targets? I thought that was dangerous. Yeah. Well, it can be, we've got a video on that, shooting steel safely, you know, you shoot steel at your own risk, but one of the beauties of it is, get ready for this, if I had that target out there, uh, painted black even, I mean, and that big, just like it, or painted any color or whatever, but out there at that distance, which is uh, about 80 yards on this range too, uh, and I'm shooting at it, am I gonna know whether I hit it or not? Probably not, unless I've got a spotting scope set up and all that kind of thing. So it uh, pretty much obviates the need for a spotting scope. You can you can even see your hits uh, quite often. You know the the gray little spot where the bullet hit, right? So steel is just fun. You you can I use it so often sighting in a firearm. I mean to tell you, uh, so often if it's uh, just the other day we have a Ruger Mark IV in target models. I bring it out and the first thing I do, I load it up and I just bear down, get a really good sight picture and try to get a, a, a good trigger release and everything you do when you're trying to hit something accurately, right? And uh, on the steel target, I put one in the middle and uh, where, if there's a hit on already somewhere that's very clear and nothing around the hit, it's just like a little marker for me. And I hold right on that little hit and, and, and take a couple of shots and and I can see exactly where I'm hitting, uh, maybe above it, to the right, left, whatever. I can see my mistakes, and then I'll, I'll do it a few more times, maybe, and then I'll put one on another clean target. You know, okay, let me start over here, you know. Okay, that was me, yeah, it's right on, about an inch high or something of that. Yeah, so it's really simple to sight in a target, just like you do on paper, except there's no stapling up a paper target and marking and messing with it. So for just, backyard uh, sighting in, uh, you know, defensive kind of pistol or, you know, I mean, it works fine for me, it works fine. Uh, but I go to paper occasionally too. I go to paper sometimes. All right, uh, so anyway, crazy world and I hope you're gonna get through it. I hope we all get through it. Uh, sometimes it's questionable, isn't it? Same old deal. I think we uh, need to not pay attention to a lot of it as much just enough to know what's going on and be careful with our sources, who we're believing, all that. Uh, phew. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, I'll tell you, the world just runs on uh, agenda-driven narratives 
And so figuring out who to believe sometimes is not easy. And it seems like it's getting more and more so that you almost don't want to believe the majority of people, what the majority narrative is. It just seems like the way the world's working, the way media works, that you almost have to, it kind of goes against what I've uh, advised us, you all on, in my own advice, uh, the popular narrative is quite often uh, not, not correct because of the manipulation and all that, that that's going on. And you do need to, look at, need to look at other opinions about what's happening. You really do, whether it's sports, uh, whether it's the politics or whatever, uh, a virus that might be going around, you know, whatever it might be, at least hear what other people have to say about things. Uh, there have been some revelations. Well, you know, in Nashville this week, there was a revelation about the news, how some emails were uh, uncovered and how the correct information about the spread was, was kind of, uh, well, it didn't meet the narrative or what uh, certain politicians wanted. And so uh, they were messing with that, you know, and closing things maybe didn't need to be closed. And more of that will come out too. So it's, it's a shame, uh, isn't it? It really is that uh, you, you just almost can't trust people in charge. It, it seems like it, you know. Uh, with the internet and everybody's in media now, it's harder to hide something. It eventually comes out, right? And maybe maybe it's always been this way. <laughs> I'm getting all choked up. I need a drink. Maybe it's always been this way. Even when I was 10 years old, I'm sure it was to some extent. But as everything has become so more, uh, so much more political, it's uh, more of a, an issue, I think. So anyway, we've got to be smart, and that's hard to do if you're from Kentucky, but we've got to try. We've got to try. I'm from Kentucky, and I try <laughs> my best. What do you want me to shoot next? I'm going to shoot this again, okay? I've got five more bullets in this box, so I'm going to fire them off. I really like this gun, and uh, if there was anything else I was going to yak about, let me try to keep it shorter for you this week. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, nice. Load one, skip one, and load the other four. Okay. Hope I don't offend anybody by shooting, okay? You're sitting there out of ammo and uh, can't find any. And here I am firing ammo. Uh, I'm sorry uh, if I'm offending you. Yeah. All right, take a shot. Good old hog leg, hard to beat. Oh yeah, I like it, I like it. Oh man, speaking of being offended, uh, I know you're not offended, you understand. I've gotta try to keep up the shooting, okay? Uh, as long as I can, and one day I won't be shooting anymore, but until then, I'm gonna shoot if I can, if I have ammo, right? Uh, it's so easy to be offended, isn't it? Uh, and we all know that some people have made a uh, what a, a, a an industry <laughs> of being offended and and reacting and being outraged. And you know, I've talked about that before. I know I talk about it too much, but it, it happens so much. I mean, the news is so often that's uh, news, quote unquote, the narrative stations, right? <laughs> they call themselves the news. You know, so often cable news all of it but uh, they have more time it's it's mainly i mean it's really funny if you think about it stand back and look at it it's it's really it's really uh, they, they fill so much time with who is being offended by what tweets who's reacting who's tweeted or said something and what people are saying about that who's offended by it and and what they've said and then maybe a, twi a twitter war between some people and what so and so says about this what if the, if it was uh, illegal, which we would not want, but to uh, to report on that stuff? Anything anybody said on social media 
was off limits uh, on news programs, TV news programs. <laughs> what would be, there would be no news, really, hardly, right? But so much of it is that. It's what this celebrity or this person who was well-known or whatever tweeted and what this person said in reaction to it and who was outraged and, and so-and-so fires back and so-and-so is outraged by this. I mean, and so-and-so is offended and this group's offended and they're offended back. And it, it's just funny. I mean, being outraged and being offended. It, it reminds me of some of the psychology I used to, to study and how some people don't have a, a, a purpose in life, or how would you phrase it? They don't have much going on, put it that way. They don't have any interests or something. They need some hobbies. They need a life, you know. Um, and, and a lot of people have lived unfortunate lives, you know, and it's not all their fault, but uh, we're born where we're born and into whatever family we're born into. We don't get to choose that, right? Uh, so we always want to remember that. But so many people, they just, uh, they, they need that validation or something. They need that attention or those clicks, right? Uh, because if you, think about it, if you don't have much going on, nobody's paying much attention to you. Nobody cares about you. You can't seem to get anything going, uh, whether it's in the media or anywhere. Uh, one way you can get attention is by being what? Outraged by something maybe, or, or just offended, right? I remember reading, uh, I think it was Ernest Becker, I don't know, some psychologist or social scientist, whatever. It may have been wrong, so I'm not practicing uh, psychiatry or anything. But there was a discussion about, uh, there was some philosopher or social scientist uh, view was his study of working with mental patients or people who were suffering from paranoia, at least certain levels of it. And you know what paranoia is, right? Yeah, people had to get you. Uh, but one of the, the elements of that uh, he was writing about was that it, it gives, people meaning is uh, those people you know even being uh, what level of uh, psychotic or psychosis I don't know what, what it would be called exactly but it, they're kind of uh, uh, da not damaged but they have a serious problem with so I'm trying to get at okay someone some of these people with a pretty serious problem really of paranoia not just what you and I joke about okay really do suffer from some level of paranoia and part of the the deep-seated uh, uh, origins of that of the discovery was that it gave their life meaning you know, it gave their life meaning I mean think about that uh, if nobody cares about you uh, think about the motivation if your brain's not quite right like mine you're a little bit twisted uh, you have issues psychological issues whatever uh, at least if everybody's out to get me at least that shows they care about me, right? Hey, I, I, I mean something to somebody. I mean, they're out to get me. They're, out, they're after me, okay? So it gives, me, <laughs> it gives my existence some, some meaning. You know, I count. I'm, I'm worth something. I'm worthy of people being after me for some reason. I mean, it makes sense to me. They may be all BS. I don't know if you're a psychologist or psychiatrist, but it makes sense to me because I, I suspect there are people, uh, there, that element, there's an element of that in, in a, a lot of different, I don't know, personality disorders or minor disorders or just some of the weirdness of people what I'm getting at, you know. Uh, if I'm offended, uh, I don't know, it gives me, it gives me some meaning. You know, I'm offended and I can state that. And especially if it's somebody uh, well known, I can be offended by them or I can be outraged by them. And that'll get me attention and that'll give my life meaning. All right, you know, it, it may get me, it may just be for clicks, you know, for pennies, but uh, attention, but it also gives my life meaning. I mean something, I matter, you know, I matter. If, if I see a problem, with so-and-so, whether it's LeBron James or Elvis Presley or whoever, some big name, uh, politician, you name it, uh, then, you know, that gives me, uh, I'm tied into them. 
I'm tied into that person, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's your psychology lesson for the week. Don't quote me on it. Just some random thoughts from some random things I have read, and uh, just I thought it was kind of interesting. You know, it's uh, how we how we uh, create our own meaning and our worth and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, sometimes I think that's reflected in this desire to be outraged by things, be meddling in other people's business. Right, so. I'm not going to give you any more psychology lessons. I'm going to talk about the guns. What did you want to know before I let you go? About the Glock 20, fourth generation, Gen 4, or the Black Hawk, Ruger Black Hawk, made in 1972? Do I have any questions? Okay, yes, I knew I'd get that one. The barrel is uh, seven and a half inches long, same length as the Colt, the original Colt. Okay? Another one, uh, no, the original Colts did not have adjustable sights like this, okay? Now they had one later on, that, that came about, uh, I should know, what was it called, the Colt New Frontier? They came out with in, I don't know, 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s? I don't know, it has a sight on which I don't like. The old Colt single action should not have sights on it, <laughs> not adjustable sights on it. Uh, you know, so I don't have any of those in my collection. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yeah, I heard that. No, no, this is not the exact gun that I owned. It's exactly like it, okay? That was the appeal. Not the exact gun. Like a fool, I traded it off. Had to have a 44 Magnum in the same gun. It was a super black cock, but it was a 44 Magnum. Just had to have it. Couldn't afford to just buy it outright. Yeah, at the time. So, any questions, other questions about it? Yeah, it came from Simpson Limited. Yeah, Simpson Limited, Galesburg, Illinois, on loan. Although I do have the option to purchase these, so you might see it later. Any questions about this one? The Glock 20. Uh, it holds 15 in the magazine, 15, okay, in a standard magazine. 15 rounds of 10 millimeter. Okay, 10 millimeter. What else? Gen 4, you weren't listening, so Generation 4. What else? Uh, yes, it, it will fire a 40 caliber. It, well, 10 millimeter is 40 caliber. It will fire a 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, it kind of head spaces on the extractor and, and it'll fire. I, I think it's not advisable to do a lot of it. It's kind of hard on it. It doesn't chamber as deeply and head space like on the edge of the chamber like it should, right? Because the, the case of the 40 is shorter. So that makes sense. If you've got a barrel that's designed for this case, then the 40 is going to be a little shorter. You know, it's not going to, you know, with a rim cartridge like 38 Special, 30, uh, 357 Magnum, it doesn't matter. You put a 38 in a 357 Magnum, you got a big rim on it. That's what holds it in place, uh, whether it's 38 or 357. It's at the back of the cartridge. But with semi-automatic, you got you don't have a rim that it catches on. And, and so it kind of head spaces, you know, right there. So, so you do have that issue, but it kind of hold, it's held by the extractor. I have fired 40 Smith & Wesson in one of these a few times, just see if it worked, but I didn't want to break my extractor. I don't know, you might fire a thousand rounds. Um, I think also, uh, it may not be the safest thing. I'm not sure, it, 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 I'm not sure, yeah. But you're better off to fire the, the round in the gun that it's designed for, okay? Uh, okay, anything else about this one you'd like to know? Uh, well, it's sort of new to me. I bought it, uh, look up the videos on it. I bought it, uh, uh, when was it? Uh, it's been a, two or three months ago, I think. Okay, and it's my first Gen 4 Glock 20. I have the uh, Gen 3, still have it. And in fact, we have a video, I think, comparing Gen 3, Gen 4. We'll post that maybe one day before too long. Okay, so. And in that, I'll tell you which I prefer, and if there's a difference in recoil, because this is Gen 4 is a different spring system, right? Recoil spring. So that's one reason that we did the uh, comparison. Is right, that all the questions? Okay, no more? Oh, there's one more, I hear it. Why am I so stupid? Well, I have no, no knowledge of why. I'm just here, okay? <laughs> I am here to 
cause you pain, like I used to tell my students. That's my primary purpose in life. You know, I would tell them, uh, uh, remind them how I, I hate kids. You know, I taught middle school for a long time, and, and I used to tell them I, I hate kids. And somebody would always ask the question. It was great. It's like like clockwork, so predictable. Somebody would always ask me, usually some little girl, she'd say, well, Mr. so well, why do you teach if you hate kids? And, and I always had the great answer. Well, it does no good to hate kids if you don't get the opportunity to hate on them. I teach because I've got a captive audience so to torment, you know? So uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that does come to mind before I let you go, you know, these are a couple of favorite firearms, you know, the single action, big bores, and you know, of course the Glock or polymer pistols. And what two firearms could be any more different, right? Again, just another uh, observation and uh, another lesson, which I give often, about diversity. <laughs> diversity with everything. Uh, diversity with firearms, variety is the spice of life. Don't get too locked into just these black polymer pistols or brown or white or whatever color your polymer pistol is. Some are green. Don't, don't, you branch out a little bit. There's so many cool firearms out there, uh, whether it's a lever gun made in the 1800s or made in the 1900s or made last year, a lever gun. Yeah, they're just so much fun. Single actions are so much fun, whether it's a Ruger, a Colt, a, uh, 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 a uh, well, I was thinking of two or three different kinds of Rugers. Ruger makes a lot of different single actions. A, a, a Cimarron, a, you know, a Uberti, whatever it is, Colt clone. They're just so, so much fun and uh, historical, okay? So do not limit yourself in life, all right? Uh, if you do, you know, you may risk being one of those people I've been talking about. You might live a shallow life and end up at some point in your life without even realizing it, doing nothing but getting up out of bed and looking for a reason to be outraged or to be offended, okay? So add some depth and variety to your experience so you won't be one of those people, okay? We have enough of them already out there. I know they're, and they're all on social media, right? That's where they con congregate, that's, that's where they feed. <laughs> that's where the feeding frenzies take place. And uh, they come after everybody. They'd probably come after me someday, okay? But I mean, they, they, they come after everybody, right? Uh, I'm surprised they haven't come after me. How many hours of videos do we have unedited, you know, where I'm just talking off the top of my head. Wow. Uh, so, uh, you know, which reminds me, switching gears one last time, I just saw a comment. Somebody said that, uh, that the video on this gun was number 1999. Okay, which means the next video posted, this one, <laughs> will be uh, 2000. I mean, if he knew what he was talking about, okay? I don't know. Uh, he probably did, uh, which brings up a point. I got to looking around, I saw that. I'm so dumb, I guess. I remember it used to be that on your home page, your channel page, it would show you how many videos you have. Yeah, really, it was just always, I remember the last time I remember seeing that much, it was, what, like 15 or 1600, maybe even 17. But I haven't seen that. I mean, did I change something? Did I uh, change the format or click where it's there, you just gotta go to settings or something? I, I just haven't seen it. And I looked around after I saw that comment and not extensively, but I went you know, to video manager in different places and I looked around and account settings and different things. And I, I couldn't find a number how many videos we have. Now, I, you would think under account man or uh, video manager, you know, where it lists your most recent videos round down, uh, they would just show up there. I think that's where it used to, you know, the number of videos that you have. But it doesn't show for me, and, and I haven't seen that number in forever. So, this might be video number 2000. I should have had a birthday cake or some celebration out here, but I don't even know if it's real. 
but uh, whoever posted that, uh, just in case it is, let me take a couple of shots before I let you go with a 10 millimeter uh, to celebrate. <laughs> and if it's a false celebration, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not my fault. It's user, whatever his name was. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, if this is 2000, I know we're getting close to it, I think. And uh, But I, I, like I say, I just haven't had visibility on that. And uh, that's a lot of videos. Uh, you know, you'd think in all those videos, we'd have posted something worthwhile, wouldn't you? Something more worthwhile. Well, let me, uh, let me just dump out these rounds since it's... Uh, so maybe it's a possible celebration okay it's a possible celebration all right maybe i'll get it verified and when i post this up i'll know and i can pin a comment <laughs> happy 2000 video i'll just put them on this paper how's that all right <sighs> celebrating possibly 2000 videos <laughs> 10 millimeter <laughs> they just seem to work don't they so I'm glad y'all came by and, and I appreciate your, your support uh, you know some videos get out there they're monetized some are not like I said last week and uh, you just never know uh, it's, it's so random so random and I try to catch them I know uh, YouTube automatically puts in mid-roll ads uh, that happened on this video and I was on the road and I saw it. I was listening to a video on my phone. Now, I like to do that before, you know, after I post them soon or before I do or whatever, before I make them live. And uh, because I understand comments, if someone asks some question or makes some reference to something, I say, what were you talking about? Oh, that's right. That was something I said in the video. You might have forgotten because the video might have been done a few weeks ago or whatever. Uh, so I was watching it, and, you know, and an ad started popping up in the middle of it. Oh, man. It wouldn't be so bad if it was just one or something, maybe. But it seems like it's one of the Sunday shoot-arounds. I, I forgot to go in and disable the mid-roll ads. There was an ad, because, uh, you know, I saw comments. People said, wow, look at the ads. And that got my attention. So I went and looked at it I, I de before I de-checked de the box. There was an ad set for literally every, it looked like every four or five minutes. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And uh, that's my mower guy. Oh, well, I'll call him back. We're repairing my mower. But uh, so anyway, you know, just I, I try to remember to do that. And, uh, uh, you yeah, know, not just abuse people, you know, with, like that with ads. It's uh, unreal. But you never know whether they're going to run or not anyway. So I need to go remember to go in there and do that once I you know, post a video. So apologize for some of that annoyance. Uh, we like to make money as well as anybody does, but I don't want to uh, annoy you too badly. Even though I'm good at annoying people, I don't want to overdo it, okay? <laughs> so you all take care, have a good week. Try to survive the crazy world we live in these days. Uh, I thought it would be getting better sooner than it is, uh, but I, I think it will, things will start getting better I really do before too long now uh, with some of the medical breakthroughs coming and, and uh, all that so hope that'll help and uh, we'll get through it we'll get through it and uh, just hang in there and you might work on some dry practice you know if you don't have any ammo you know you're a serious trainer trying to learn to shoot maybe you're a new shooter not a trainer but you're learning to shoot and want to get some training and all that kind of thing uh, you know, maybe get you some, um, uh, you know, dud rounds, or ammo designed for that, dummy rounds. Uh, I, of all people, should know that term, right? But some dummy rounds and, uh, you know, work on your trigger control and that kind of thing. Uh, clean your guns, learn about guns, uh, watch videos. <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, try to try to get by it. I know it's frustrating. I mean, it's, it's gotta be really frustrating. For, for folks that just bought a new gun and they can't even find a box of ammo for it, you know, and they're all excited about their new gun. So, yeah, wow. Well, everybody's learning the hard way, right, uh, about that. So 
Anyway, y'all take care. Have a good week. And uh, I'll, I'll see you later. And I'll hopefully be back next Sunday morning and shoot around a little bit. Life is good.